So, Dr. Kimwere, uh, is it okay if we start? I think um, is, we can start if, if uh, Dr. Guimapi is ready. Okay, okay, okay. Rita, how are you? I hope you are ready. Hello. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, I think I'm fine. Good, good, excellent. So, 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 welcome everybody. Uh, we are uh, starting, and uh, we we start by introducing uh, our speaker, who is called Dr. Rita uh, Guimapi. Uh, Rita Guimapi is a research scientist at the Norwegian Institute of Bioeconomy. It is abbreviated as NIBIO in Norway. He works in the Division of Biotechnology and Plant Health at the Department of Pests and Weeds in Forestry, Agriculture and Horticulture. His main areas of work are mathematical modeling of plant pests and their beneficial organisms for use, among other things, in, uh, in running services. Uh, in parts of his responsibilities to support researchers with experimental planning and statistical analysis. Uh, so Rita joined NIBIO on May 2020 as a postdoctoral research in charge of model development for integration into decision support systems. Uh, and his academic background completes of a PhD in computer sciences from JQuad, uh, obtained in 2020 while doing ecological modeling of the international at the International Center for Insect Physiology, that is ISIPE. He holds a master's in computer science from University of Yaounde, that's Cameroon, and a bachelor's uh, in mathematics and computer science from University of uh, Dishan, uh, and that is stated that it is in Kenya. Maybe he will uh, tell us exactly whether that is in Kenya or whether that's a typo. He has a particular interest in many areas of experience in the use of modeling and computer-based simulation to understand and predict effect of both environmental and climatic factors in the dynamics of agroecological processes in relation to plant protection. Uh, he also likes to explore how implemented models could be well integrated into DSS and help address pests, uh, that is insects and plant management, challenges of the well being of smallholder farmers. Uh, and so, Casilita uh, has quite some extensive experience. Uh, in this area. And so Rita, uh, please feel welcome to give your presentation. Um, in my understanding, you have about uh, 40 or so, uh, or, or between 30 to 40 minutes to, to give your presentation. And then from there, we shall go into discussion time. Welcome. <laughs> So a minute. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, everyone. And thank you for, the, for inviting me to give a presentation. So uh, the, can I share my screen? What is the button? Mm. There should be a green icon uh, down there. Yes, yes. Is it a pre in presentation mode? Yes, yes, it is in presentation mode, yes. Uh, yes, as I was saying, uh, Dr. Kimole, uh, I mean, I received this invitation and with the suggestion maybe to come and share my my experience in the area, what I've been to share with the other, what I've been doing since uh, during my PhD and my postdoc uh, in the area, I am in the area of modeling for plant protection. So I will, as I, as I, as I say, yes, I am now, I am writing Gimapi, now I'm working as a researcher in Nibio. Uh, 
I, the, the title, I, may, I formulated the title Computer Science and the Science Support System for Integrated Pest Management because I felt that, uh, I mean, instead of saying something like uh, my experience, I feel like maybe that somehow will embed a bit what I've been doing so far during my PhD. So just uh, quickly about uh, my, my background, uh, the prof did, did it, but I will just summarize. Uh, I, start, I am from Cameroon, and from Cameroon, I did my bachelor and master. First, uh, bachelor in mathematics and computer science after I followed by the master. And after that, when I finished my, I finished my master, I got the opportunity to come to, to Kenya through a scholarship participate. And why I was participate, at, I I registered JQuat because I mean it was a choice. I remember at the time I was suggest to go to South Africa, but I at that time I chose JQuat because I felt like as ECP was a center focusing because when you just I like this picture because when I went there that is why I have because I wanted to develop and and simulate tools on access, I have to, to learn and do some basic study and understanding of, about how NSEC behave, uh, about uh, a lot of things around NSEC to be able to build my model. So I, I say, okay, JQuart, uh, I felt JQuart was a good place for me as from the name, it's, a, it's an, 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 it's an university related to agriculture. And then after why I was completing my PhD, I started to apply and I got the opportunity to come to join, to come to Nibio for a postdoc. So I, um, before, before I, I, I properly go into the, uh, sorry, when I will reach 20 minutes, please, can you, make, can you notify me? Because I may talk and forget about the time, sorry. Okay. 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 So uh, I, I was thinking before we we go into the use of uh, computational science into integrated mining, I wanted maybe to to explain why why integ why integrated pest management and why it's even important. And maybe why we us as uh, computer scientists or mathematicians we need also to to contribute in that area. So, you know, in, we are all in, I, at a certain level, maybe we are all farmer at a certain level, maybe just a maize or something. And usually when we have crops, we have pests in our farm, the, the direct solution is usually to, to apply chemicals, chemical. But although those chemicals seem to have a direct good effect to kill pests, there's already a long-term side effect that is so just, that involves a lot of residue remaining maybe on the crop, some are in the soil, and also some are, some are, some touch the skin of human, so it's not healthy for the human. So then some long time ago, some people came with a new strategy, they suggested, okay, why can we not think about doing things differently? Because when I talk about the, the, the side effect, one of the main, the most important side effect is in the crop, why they are pests, they are also beneficial in organism. When I, what I mean by that, for example, one of the most common is bee. You know, for, for us to have crop, if you look at the farm like a system, there's a lot of interaction, a lot of dynamic of insect, and the bee have to pick pollen from the male plant to the female plant, and that is how. And when you, pre you, you spray chemic chemical, although even if it kill the pest, it kill all those benefic beneficial organisms. And after you allow that, maybe you don't have good crops. And the good exam, I will, the one of the good recent exam, I will show this. Uh, I think recently we are all aware about uh, the locust invasion. If you remember, for example, in Kenya, it was more in East Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia. 
most of the government to 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 fight against it use a lot of tools to spray chemical to kill. I mean, that was uh, maybe the desperate solution. After that, there's this study who who came who who came recently showing that well, what is here, for example, showing that environmental monitoring was largely absent. And it showed that in Ethiopia, for example, the, 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 the spray of those chemicals in Ethiopia and Kenya led to the lot of killing of no tagging pests like honey and bird. And the consequences that maybe you observe the reduction of uh, production of, of honey, you will see that uh, there's let uh, the reduction of yield because there's not anymore those beneficial uh, organisms that can help to, 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 to build. So to, to, to try to, to reduce that side effect of the reduce the use of those chemicals, that is why some scientists long time ago propose a new formalism that they call integrated pest management. It's just a science-based approach that combines varied uh, many techniques and it is to avoid the use of chemical while you are trying to fight the pest. And it involves like uh, alter the surrounding. You can just alter the surrounding of the crop. Uh, maybe now you release more beneficial insects. When I say release, maybe you can realize that the pest that invade your farm, there's another insect pest that is a predator to that pest. So one of the things is to you release that insect to your farm or to the area you are cropping so you can maybe crop, plant, and resist the pest. So there are various techniques that involve prevention, action, monitoring, and identif identifying the pest. But all those integrated pest management require, require suitable environmental conditions. So now, to be able to be successful, you need now to, 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 to play and to play with that natural interaction. One of the most commonly used, okay, not most commonly, the, one of the techniques that is so used is what they call biological control approach. In that approach, it's what I was referring at the releasing of beneficial organisms that involve maybe you can release fung fungi, you can release some virus. And the advantage of this approach is that it will only target the specific insect that play the role of the pest in your farm. So you, you, the advantage is that it doesn't have side effect that we see when we use chemical. But as I say, the problem with that approach is that it is to be successful is really related to climatic condition and all. Now, for us, because uh, food, food security is a global, it's a global issue. The role for us as computer scientists and, and mathematicians we can play is now to, to contribute by the use of model of simulation to see how we can optimize, you can help understand, predict, optimize all those interactions in relation to, 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 to the environmental factor. So that is where our usually our role come into because we sh I think we should not let it only to already on uh, only to agroeconomists although they have the skill for agronomy of maybe it's chemical or biological some of those uh, experiments are difficult to replicate and sometimes it's important to use simulation mathematics model to 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 build the abstraction of those systems and then make some simulation to improve the, 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 the quality of the, pest, of the pest control. And once we did that, we are done with our part, usually we, we can understand the output of those models, those simulations, but because the agricultural official, the policy maker that we use, usually doesn't have the same background of understanding you have, that is why it is usually important now to embed those models into decision support system. Because the process is from the field, from the agro system environment, you have pest disease in relation to weather. That's usually the, 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 the framework of, of those decisions supposed we, are, we, we have to develop. 
you 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 have you observe a phenomenon in the field, you take you collect some information data, you build model using the SP knowledge, you 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 interpret your advice, and then the output you use it to make decision and some action that made in the environment. Basically, that is uh, the general cycle of what uh, the work I've been doing is related to. Now, I will just, uh, in the next, I will just continue with presenting us some, I will call it maybe success case story from my PhD, it is my period on the, the problem and the related piece I have been involved in and which type of uh, approach of model I've been developing to, to contribute. The, uh, the first one, I think those who, the prof who were involved in my PhD may remember this. The first one is, was tuta absoluta. This piece uh, is still, uh, although it reduces, but it spelled that damage a lot of tomato. This picture you see down there was taken in the farm. I don't remember the area in Kenya when we went to visit. All those tomato down there are the loss from a farmer. And, and the pest, the challenge here was to predict because at the time in 2006, it was discovered in Spain and progressively, as you can see, it was, it was, invas it was invas invasive to other African countries. In Kenya, it was in 2013. So when I started my PhD, the question and the challenge at that time was those living in the, the, the in the, so there was a global concern to know when it can reach the southern part of the Africa because they wanted to know to be able to anticipate and take some control measures to to put some quarantine measures. So uh, having the problem, what we did, we we came, we explored the the the, the use of uh, a cellular base of tomato. This is the mathematical formulation of the model we build, we propose. Basically, it was a model that was that could be characterized specially into cell and a sort a set of rules that was described in the dynamic of the pest and the interaction with environmental condition. The first step was to understand how the pest move, what are the factors that influence that. And then based on that, we came with this mathematical model. That's the general formulation. And from that, we then did some simulation which we predicted. And at the time we predicted that by 2017, the pest will reach the southern part. And maybe locally, because the pest was involved in the phenology, the development of the pest, the temperature, the humidity, the, 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 the yield of the, the, the availability of the tomato in the area. So we, we simulated from, from many years and we found that it will reach uh, the southern part in 2017. And luckily, I don't know if I will say luckily, our model was so accurate, which was a good thing. Sometimes it's not always that good. You always have to, to there are always some error, but in this case, we were, we were really lucky. So the next work I have to do was to, to, to do a, a special, a model for special optimization of, of some device that were used on the field for pest control. Just to highlight, I told you the key of integrated pest management is to use to release beneficial organism. And then fungi is one of the most successful XCP developers at the time. And in combination with those fungi, they developed some device that was able to attract the insect they were targeting. And then when the insect infected the, 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 fung, the, the fungi, it went to interact with the other insect in the farm and is the one now releasing the, 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 the beneficiary organism. So all that interaction into the farm in relation to the, the, the success rate was related to environmental conditions. So the idea now was to take the, all of that into consideration to now to now determine how optimal we can, if we have a farm 
how optimal we can set the farm into into the into into a farm considering the flyability of the pest the wind in the area the climatic condition so we proposed this model and this algorithm during the the thesis and we we implemented we we, we tested it those pictures you see with the yellow dot those are mango farm uh, sorry i forgot all the name of those area so we, we implemented that in those areas, those three are mango farm. So we simulated and, and find the suitable, the optimum trap position. Because the challenge was that if you put too many traps based on the flyability of the, of the insect, you end up, the farmer end up spend a lot of money because at the end of the, let's keep in mind that the end of the, the goal of the farm is to gain a lot of money. So we have to use those models sometimes to optimize the way it should use the solution we propose to him to avoid him use those chemicals. So and the challenge there was that if you if he buy too much trap, it's, it's still costing. If he put not a lot of trap, he will not one trap will not really co properly cover the farm. So we propose a, a, a mathematical model that was proposing a area, the optimal area one trap can cover based on the flyability and also on the environmental condition in the location, which we, we solve. Now, as I say, the end is always to put all those models into decision support system. At the end of the day, all those models present all those different algorithms developed. We developed a a decision support system called EPFR, Antimor Pathogen Forgito, that now the, the policy maker are using now to monitor those pests when they want to use. And I didn't go through into all of those data, some of those work, many of those work uh, more detailed. These are the different publications we got during the, 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 the thesis where most of the data. I just want to add that one of the work, I also, those were collaboration. During that time, there was a need to have a tool, this, this application tool, to predict the phenology of the maize plant. What I mean phenology is that every insect and every plant, they have the phase of development or development of development that we can divide into two phases. If I take the relation with human, for example, we can divide the life of human. Maybe we can say, okay, first we are in kindergarten. After we go to primary school, after to secondary school, there is some standard stage for maize. And then there was a need also to to be able to develop a tool that can predict that in relation to temperature for maize. That is, it. I also I just contributed to that uh, to that. And that was uh, during my PhD. And when I finished, then I came to Nibio. And when I came to Nibio, my the the main the piece of interest was what is we call for lamirum. That is highly damaging to maize. If some of us uh, crop are growing maize, maybe the they should be aware of this uh, pest. Uh, maybe they, they are aware of this pest. This pest, we all know the importance of maize in Africa because more than 3 million Africans depends on maize as the main staple food. And it's a con it may account for 30 to 50% of low income for household expense in Africa. And the particularity of this space is that it was native to America. It was not present in Africa until 2016. It was discovered in Nigeria in 2016. And from Nigeria, just like in one year, from, from 2016 to 2017, it was all over Africa. And 
what how does this space damage crop and as soon as he enter your farm he get into your farm you just he can the loss the damage can reach 100 percent and basically the cycle of his damage into farm he lay the eggs on the leaf of your plant then the eggs develop to larva start to eat the leaf and then after they come into your um, the, the the mist and then the cycle continue and the end of this picture show an infested farm and at that time what happened is that the fowl they they came into help and then all those red points all over africa they put some device to collect the information i will call them trap all those all africa was covering by those trap and they collect information from 2018 to 2020 uh, there were so many variables that was collected and at that time the challenge was how can we apply some data analytics to those data because there was thousands on a land of data collected imagine all those dot every week there was recorded the information the challenge was now okay how can we use all those information to to model and predict the level of risk infestation of this pest in africa so uh i was uh, the, the the project i was involved at that time was part of those who have to address the issue so what i did i just in this case then apply the data science so i took the data just proceeded with all the steps we know about data science first i went with some explanatory data analysis uh, feature selection uh, but i was doing it in r in r most of the work i've been presenting was done in r or in java so i did some linear mixed model analysis statistical approach to identify the key the key variable the, the, the variable that has the main effect the random effect and then once we were able to understand the, the key area affected to when the pest is more is more virulent is more uh, virulent in which area of africa we then came with the model and we we then came with this uh, rule based model at the end of the day we we, we propose a rule based model that uh, to propose to we propose this rule based model to show the level of risk of infestation in africa and then the next day we're now to simulate and to project it in all africa so that decision maker can use that to 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 to, to monitor the pest so this is what we got and this is for the 12th month this map the way they were using it is to show the red one was for that month where the pest is more the risk is very high the yellow area was the area where the risk at that month is moderate and the green was where the risk of infestation is low and the white area was where the area where there was absolutely no risk so we proposed this but this was not the beginning this is good from as a beginning step this was good it was a good beginning but now the challenge was in africa we know we have smallholder farmer how this cannot help a smallholder farmer because the smallholder farmer what is interested is if i go to my maybe one hectare farm and i crop my maize when can i expect Okay, so that work uh, was, uh, or it was also, the detail can be found here. So as I was saying, what the smallholder farmer is more interested into is, okay, if I snow my maize today, I know that, I know that this pest will come. If I know that there's a risk, high risk of this pest to come. From the time I snow my maize, what is the optimal time frame? from the female of that pest to I have and lay the eggs in my maze. Solving this was important because it could allow us 
for online foreign cars and information service. And second, it was it was important for user in decision support flat, platform. And the third, it could help to give the timing of EPM, uh, integrated pest management advice. Because something I didn't say about the EPN approach is that because you have to target the pest at a specific developmental stage, you also have to do it fast. Because if, for example, the solution must target the larva stage of the insect and you lose time, you came when it's already the, the next stage, which is, for example, the they call pupa, which is the next stage, the solution will not work. So to do that, here, this graph show for this insect the different developmental stage. This model you see so different. You have A for X, L for lava, P for what they call pupa, and A for I jot. So the idea was first to model that that uh, that phenology of the insect. Second, to also model the phenology of the maze and find a way to 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 integrate both, so that we can we can we can predict the accurate time from when the farmer snow the maize, when the pest will arrive to the farm and at which developmental stage the pest will be. And then find a way to send notification to the farmer and tell him that, okay, I think you should go maybe to check. To, to, to address that, we definitely were supposed to use an empirical modeling approach that when you say I'm primary, there was then a need to collect some specific information to understand the dynamic of that pace into the farm. So to do that, before I go into detail, to do that, we have to collaborate with another institution that is called ETA. Maybe you, 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 you are aware of that institution. They developed it, at that time, they developed it, an application that they call FIA, Pharma Interface application the application has an algorithm for scooting protocol what i call scooting is that there is a standard to develop in in, in, agro, in agriculture to, to to develop the level of infestation the level of damage of a farm usually they do what they call they call scooting so they go into the farm they have a way to walk into the farm and then for each uh, position they record some information so they have this scooting application they develop it for maize and for this pest. And here in Nibio, oh, sorry. Here in Nibio, we have this decision support system we call VIPS. VIPS is basically an oral, an, the online, it's, it's, it has been used for many years here in Europe. And the idea was now to, to extend and to see if we can use this in Africa for pests. So VIPS basically is a non-life for information service for integrated pest management. And it's an open source technology. And you have to, it's built on the collaboration between Nibio and the Norwegian Agricultural Extension Service. So at the time when I came, that was my role to find a way then to, to build those models and to find a way to make the two, the two, the two tools to make VIPs interact with, uh, with this uh, application so that when we have our model, when we have our model built into VIPs, it can use the weather observation and weather forecast, the information about the farm to deliver some notification to the farm. And how does VIPs work? Basically, most most models developed use the biology, the phenology, and specific pest disease. You, you can use the information about the host plant and agricultural practice. It takes into account the local and regional climatic condition. And basically, what it, the, 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 the decision support system uses at input, it uses the field observation, the climate weather, and the weather forecast. Because when you want the, the weather, the climate weather, when you want to build a model, and then we find it, when you want to, to predict, we use the weather forecast to, to anticipate. And basically, usually the model output are generally risk level of or information, the phenology on different stages, how to use the pest. 
currently, just I mean, just the parenthesis about VIPs. Currently, that is the the the, the map of how VIPs have been used and how it's been used so many years. The green area here are the area where it is mainly used. You can see mainly here in Europe. So since 2020, we are now trying to extend it and explore how we can it can, we can make it useful in in Africa. And the first project was uh, in the Sahel area, in Mali and Niger. And now we have we are also all, we are also exploring his his use in 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 Malawi. There's also other project in Asia that is on race, not in MES, but I'm not involved in that one. So knowing that how did how do we how do we solve that uh, problem? As I say, the idea was to use an empirical approach, which means we needed to collect and to understand the interaction, the dynamic of that pace in that area. Using that scooting app, we first implemented a, 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 a protocol to collect or to understand the dynamic and the interaction of that pace in the field. What we did basically was first, from the time the farmer has snowed the mist, approximately every two days, we were going to do that to, to, to test that scouting algorithm and to collect information. And from each plant, we were trying to check the number, if the number of leaves the plant have, if there were some eggs of the of the pest, if there is no eggs, if there is the pest, which stage of the developmental the pest is the pest is. So we did that while collecting also the different developmental stage of the maze, like you can see. Also, the weather information, all of that were collected for, we did that for many farms in, in those countries and many regions. Once we, we, we had those information, let us remember our goal was to, to, to be able from the time the farmer snow his maize to give a time frame when he could have egg, egg mass or when he can he could early detect the pest. The curious thing is that one of the main thing we realized into the farm is that it was difficult into the farm to detect the eggs. After when we developed the phenology model, we realized that it was difficult because this pest, for example, as soon as the female laid the eggs, in Africa, because the environmental conditions are so good, it takes less than two days. So in one day, the eggs can, do, can always develop to the next stage. So the idea, what we, were, we could find only into the field was the, the, diff, the, the, the order of mental stage. So now what we did to be able to predict the day the eggs were laid, we adopted what we call the backward estimation. So from the day we discover, we discover a stage, we we use the weather condition to subtract every day the amount of energy, the developmental rate, because for the insects to develop, they use temperature and maybe rainfall. And based on that, they have, they can, they, we can estimate the developmental rate for that day. So then we were now for each day going backward, trying to subtract the, 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 the I will say the amount of energy or the, 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 the amount of the development of the eggs to, to find the date when the eggs were laid, were, were laid by the female. So from that now we were able to have for all the different plans, the model was able now to, to tell us from the snowing date to, for each of the farm, we were able to predict from the snowing date when the lay were egged and then we now apply, oh, sorry. We now apply, uh, uh, we now build this probability distribution function to predict when, approximately when, from the time a farmer snow the maize in those areas, how long it may take, how many, how, the, how many or it, the plant we accumulate so that we can observe the egg mass into the field. Having that now, we then integrated the model, both the phenology of the insect and the phenology of the maze, we integrate that into VIPS. And then we 
had the FIA apps, we then breed what we call, what we name the FIA cloud, because the FIA cloud here were built like was built, we built that to allow the interaction, all the models that were here to communicate and to send notification to pharma so that they can, from the day they know that, okay, there's no jammies, they can, we could predict when they, they should go and find the AMARS and then take the measure. Uh, I just need to, to add that the, the work is not yet perfect because this type of work to, to, to make more pharma use, you need a lot of field evaluation. We are still doing the field evaluation, the proposal now to calibrate, to adjust the output in relation to, to the output of the model. That is the stage we are now. Uh, the last work I may talk about was the, is the diesel locus. In 2020, when there was a the, 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 the infestation of diesel locus in East Africa, especially in Kenya, as I mentioned in the beginning, although in some areas they use chemical, 10 or 20 years ago, there was a product that was developed by the French Research Institute. And this local infestation in Kenya was uh, according to FAO, it was the big the biggest uh, in Kenya in the last 70 years and also in Ethiopia it was uh, the vast it was the biggest in, in Ethiopia and Somalia in the last 25 years. But what was the challenge now because most of the government rely on chemical. Luckily 10 years ago when there was this this uh, infestation in in Senegal, in West Africa, some researchers developed this, uh, this fungi solution that you can spray and after some day, it, you, they usually call it anthropopathogenic fungi. So when you spray it, it get into contact with the, with the locus. After a certain time, the locus start to die. So during this, uh, this, uh, this local locus invasion in Kenya, it was the first time this program was used at the large scale. It was tested in, in Somalia. I didn't, I don't think they use this in Kenya, if I'm not wrong, but it was tested for the first time in large area in Somalia to test to see if, if it can really be successful to control this type of pest. But the challenge now of using is that normally this type of approach are good when they are proactive. What I mean by proactive is that you need to be able to predict if it was successful in relation to environmental condition, and those fungi are more dependent, their success is, dep is highly dependent on temperature and relative humidity. So depending on the temperature and relative humidity, you need to be able to predict if the value of the temperature and relative humidity in the area are suitable for the pest, for the pathogen to be successful and to be efficient, to be to be effective in killing this, this local. So what we did, we propose a, we propose a model, a mathematical model. So, okay, yes. So what we do, we propose this mathematical model that, that predicted the, the efficacy of those anto, or that antimopathogen I mean, when I say antimopathogen, it's that product they develop it, which is uh, a fungus, but they could they call it antimopathogen. And the name, the commercial name was green muscle. It is a French name to, 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 to say, it's a, no, not French. It's a French company that developed it, but now it is CABI. It's a research center that to promote that. So we, we propose, some, 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 some colleague and, and me, we propose a mathematical model to, to evaluate the efficacy of the anthropathogen in relation to temperature and relative humidity. We did, we simulated the model, we were able to identify the range of optimal temperature that make the, 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 the that could make the project to be successful, also to also in relation to temperature and to, to relative humidity. And after that, 
as I say, the output is always better to provide the result into the way that is able to analyze by 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 phytosanitary official. In this map for Kenya, we produce we provided the map from Kenya and for the other ones from Mali. The red area was showing was presenting the area where we could easily release that antimopathogen for him to be successful at that specific moment to kill the pest. And he seen, he, 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 we couldn't do, unfortunately, we have, we have to be okay, we couldn't do the field because by the time we finished and probably the world, the, 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 the peak of infestation was gone and, okay, so the peak of infestation was not, always there and we couldn't evaluate properly into the field. But the way we did our evaluation is that we you can see that those, those green geolocation are location where the locust, the spam of the locust was recorded. And you can see that there's an overlay between the area where that our model predicted to be, where the tool, the, 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 the project could be. If, could have a success, could, have, could be successful in killing the pests with the area where the locusts were discovered. So we did that for some so some country, and the work, the detail, and the way we proceed the work, we managed to to have it published also. To have it published, and basically, I will just end to say uh, those are the maybe I will say the work as decide to share their order but the idea was just to the idea of, 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 of the way I put it, this presentation was just to to show and to present how us a computer scientist we can use we can use our background our background to also contribute into this area of integrated pest management and also help to, to address the issue of food security. Because I know some sometimes sometime people tend to, 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 to think that our work should only be developing application, doing pure, pure computer science. But I think we, 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 we have a role we can also play in helping addressing those, those issues, those issues. So that uh, I will just say thank for those who attended to the presentation. And that was all I had. If there's maybe any need for question, clarification, or maybe explain, more explanation, then I can go into, into detail. I didn't want to go into detail because maybe the time will know allow me. Thank you. Thank you, Rita, and uh, for the presentation. So you welcome questions. Uh, there are some in the chat. There are some of the questions in the chat. Um, there's one about uh, asked about whether you used sensors. Uh, there's a question by Chen. Are you using sensors to collect real data in your research? If I use sensor. Yeah. You are using sensors and what kind of sensors are they? That we are using. Mm, I will not say sensor for those which are not sensor, but okay. The, the, this project we didn't use sensor. What we use was some type of trap. They play like sensor, but they are not sensor. I say that because those those trap you put you put. Uh, what we call a biological attractant. For example, let's say if I want to attract, for example, a specific insect, there are already some biology that was able to identify that, okay, this insect, the, the, the product that attracts, there's this compound that attracts this insect. Now they develop what they call pheromone or kill of pheromone that you can put into some device or trap to attract and and see how to attract and con the, uh, to attract the pest. Somehow there are some sensors, I can say they are biological sensors, but I don't know if you, I, for my understanding, maybe you, you are many, you are telling sensors in terms of uh, 
of those electronic or tools, if I'm not wrong. I should think so. Uh, maybe, yes. Uh, then there's another question on um, why is the predictive model implemented? Is why it is the predictive, predictive model? Uh, the predictive? Yes. Where? Why is, it why is it implemented? Is it at the edge of the network? Ah, no, no. no. Okay, in the, which case? The case of the decision of... of uh, okay, it is for what best? Because... There's a, uh, let me just read the, the, again. Why is the predictive model implemented? Is it, is it at the edge of the network or in the cloud? Ah, no, in the cloud. It's not in the end user, no. I just saw the question. It's not in the area of the end user, no, no. The model, the model, there are two places where, if I can show that slide. Here. This, this VIPs is where the model are implemented. All the model are implemented and integrated into, into this decision support system. And now the FIA cloud, the cloud we implemented was to allow the communication. So the, the, the request, the, to, to, to ensure the communication, the request sent by the pharma to arrive to the decision support and to also to, to, to avoid the, the, the other role the FIA code is that when we do the forecast, we store the result into the cloud so that when the pharma made the request, it also, it also get the result more faster than if the treatment was done at the time you do the, 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 the request. So I hope I answer the question. The model are into the science support system. Okay. Not, and there's, uh, a, there's a question from Professor Vero. How heavy are the decision support systems? Do they require cloud services or a PC is enough? How? Sorry, maybe I should read. I didn't hear. Uh, how heavy are the decision support systems? Uh, how heavy? Ah, yeah. okay. That one is really depend on case by case. This one is web. It's a web decision. It's very. It's not really heavy. But unfortunately, the one I developed, the first one I developed, it was a desktop decision support system. You had to install. That one was really heavy. I think I will agree and I will be honest that we didn't use the best because it's after we were done. We could, we could have used some, some beta approach to implement that because it was a desktop system you have to install. And because it's also dependent on R, you have, during the installation, you have to pre-install R and install the package that are related to the software. That one was a bit uh, heavy, but this one we use here is very, it's very light and web, uh, web based solution. Okay. Then there's a question on um, how do you deal with latency problem in communication between the pharma app and the cloud sub? How I deal with the latency problem uh, in uh, communication between the pharma app and the cloud sub? Yes, as I say. Uh, the, the, the solution we, we are adopting now is that because we have some weather forecast, there is a possibility to, I would say, configure that, for example, using the weather forecast, the model is executed maybe every evening, for example, and the results are, st are stored into, into, into the cloud so that now when when the farmer make the request, maybe the day after we want to do this operation, the results are just take the results are just collected from the cloud. Not the, the it's not at that time that the model is is is, is, is simulated. So there's some frequency you run, you store into the cloud, and then the farmer can when it's made the request from this app. I mean that's what happened in the background. The farmer is not aware of that, but that's how so far the moment we. We, we handle that. And then maybe to ask, uh, how do you deal with uh, uh, the communication or the, uh, for the farmer to know what is going on in the app? Uh, is there, do you simplify the language? 
Ah, yes, 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 the language is, is this in the language of the, the yes, yes, thank you. Because when you are developing, definitely they, they, we, we maybe we use English, but at the end of the day, there's always another step. The message, the message the farmer receives are, are adapted to the local language speak, speak by, the, by the farmers. Okay, so you translate, you translate? The... Yeah, there's some translate. That's the end solution. I will be honest, at this current stage, we are still working on the translation. For example, the project we have in Malawi, that is what we are, that is one of the key, because what we did there, instead of developing an app, we, 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 there was already some, some governmental association that previously used some project where they, they were using SMS and message to deliver notification to farmer in local language. So we, they were just adding to the project. So instead to avoid, because there they was already a local existing solution for that, instead of starting the process, it was just to bring, in, to bring them into, the, 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 into the, the project. And then we just uh, try to use uh, what uh, they have been doing so far. OK. Uh, thank you. Then maybe the last, last one is uh, how, um, since your, your background is computing and the mathematics, how have you gained the agricultural knowledge? Uh, you are speaking um, as if you, are, you have a lot of background in agriculture. Uh, as I say, I think, I think all of us as computer scientists, I think when, whenever we want to model or to develop a solution for a specific domain, we have to take time to, I think that's the process. If we want to develop an app for the medical field, we have to take really time to, to understand how it is work. If, if we want the tool to be used, so because although we are doing, we are trying to abstract the reality, our abstraction should be as close as possible to what happened to the field. So I will say, when I came to ECP, as I show you the picture, uh, I, I usually like that picture a lot because I remember when I was there, my first, maybe my first six months, I will say maybe it was just about asking a lot of, I will say stupid question because sometimes a lot of people there was asking me, but what I'm doing here? Because it was, everybody was entomologist, but me, I have to go through that process to be able to understand what I need to, 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 to model and to simulate. It took, I even, there were some courses they were doing to some entomologists. I went to sit down just to, to take my time to understand insect behavior, how they move, when they become adult, what make them move, how they interact with land, because I really needed to, 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 to see how in terms of time, because all those processes, although they, they, are, they are temperature and weight and climate related effect, they also have a time and spatial effect. So I needed to, to really understand that it took me, I will say I just took a lot of time to read and ask a lot of stupid questions, I will say, because when I say stupid, I remember some, some entomology which didn't understand that me are not entomology at the beginning. There were, four, there was some of my questions was really what they know from, let's say maybe the first year of their, of their study. That is how I, I went through to, to be able to understand what happened into the field. And then now that is when maybe after one year, properly starting now to, 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 to came with a different model, how I can abstract. Because it was important for the model to be useful. Because something I didn't, I didn't mention is that in this, in this field, in this, I would say field, maybe this area, there's two ways when you want to develop model. You can build a model while you are by doing just a, a technological exercise. When I say technological exercise, let's say, for example, you there's a lot of data. You just choose, a, for example, a machine learning. I will just take an example. You apply the machine, you will get the output. But sometimes, if you don't pay attention, you will get the output that from the computer science or for the modeling app is good, but which may not be useful for the farmer or for the officer. So that's why we need is you, you need to find the the good balance. 
Thank you. Uh, 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 I invite uh, Dr. Kimel to say something. Uh, yes, welcome, Dr. Kimel. So thank you very much, everyone. Mine is to give some closing remarks on behalf of the project chief advisor, Professor Hiroshi Koaze, who would have wished to be with us, but rather engagements came up. So I would want to thank Dr. Guimapi for sacrificing his early morning. What time is it in Norway? No, no, it's your, we are just one hour back, so it's fine. <laughs> so it's fine. So yes. we appreciate you giving us that informative talk. And I hope the students who are, who I'm teaching disease support systems have also gained from this, specifically how disease support systems can be used in pest management and the same knowledge can also be applied elsewhere. So, for the audience, I hope you have gathered some useful insights into mathematical modeling and the, the modifiary nature with which computer science can be applied or blended with other fields, basically in agriculture and even in engineering. So those, uh, Dr. Guimbabwe, I hope, I hope you would uh, still be willing to mentor and also work with our students. So in the event that anybody is interested with the reaching of Dr. Guimapi, then you can let me know. Of course, I've always advocated for us using local solutions to local problems because as Africans, we seem to have very many challenges ahead of us, but it's only us who can go ahead and um, come out with solutions to addressing them. So with that, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice day. We look forward to having many more webinars. So Dr. Guimap, you're the best in your postdoctoral studies in Oslo. Thank you. The webinar is over. Okay, thank you.